Hi guys, I, you know, you depended on me every time for Global Wellness Summit Leader Livecast. I turned my camera the wrong way. It's just what I do. It sort of keeps me in the mood, right? And keeps it, keeps it live and happy. Um, I want to take a minute to introduce our guest today. Um, Giselle Fernandez is not only a dear friend of mine, but a very accomplished Emmy-winning journalist, five-time Emmy winning. She has to reach out to join me. She has to request it, so I'm sure they'll work that all out. But that'll give me a chance to brag about her. Um, not only has she worked around the country in different news stations, but she's had network gigs on CBS This Morning, CBS Evening News, NBC Today, NBC Nightly News. And I don't know if you noticed, but she was the original launch host for Access Hollywood. But right now today, she is the popular host of Spectrum One News in Los Angeles. It's a relatively young news venture, and um, their mission is hyper-local news in America's, one of America's largest cities. She's also a great friend of the Global Wellness Summit because she hosted our 2016 and 2015 summits, one in Mexico City and one in Kitzbühel, Austria. So I am going to connect with her now. Hang on. Let's see. Let's see. Here's the fun part. Do, do, do. No. Da, 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 da. There we go. Let's see if I see my Giselle. Let's see if it's happening. I'm going to brag and brag about her. <laughs> Money, buddy, you're there. I'm here. Hi, my dear friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's so exciting. We go back so far, but we're also, we have so much to share right now. I just can't wait till you tell us all the wisdoms you've heard. But can I brag about you a little bit more? I have, for that, I have all the time in the world. <laughs> I okay. love you, Kim Marshall. Thank you. Thank you for saying hello today. <laughs> I see so many of our friends waving. But let me tell you, I just said that you were the MC of the Global Wellness, Wellness Summits in Mexico City and in um, Kitzbühel, Austria. But I was just about to say that you're a proud Latina woman, you are a Mexican-American, and your mom and stepdad have their own popular mariachi band, for God's sake. <laughs> they do, they do. Right? Yeah. And then one of the things is, I don't know how you have time to do this, you were an agent for Latino talent, and you do fundraising for amazing charities like the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. How are you on the Grammy board? How are you jealous me on the board of the Kennedy Center Honors? Thank you. And you helped drive the Latino vote, vote for both Barack Obama's campaigns. Very exciting. But the big news is your um, evening show on Spectrum One, L.A. Stories. Giselle, tell us what, that's, what is that all about? Oh, it's my dream job. At this stage of my life, can you imagine? I'm doing a morning show, which is Spectrum News One, and I love it. And I work with a phenomenal young man and a great team. And we do hyper-local stories. It's all about connecting with your community. It's a really new um, kind of approach to telling local news, where people really want to know what's happening to their local businesses, their local communities, their local laws. I'm hyper-local, so I've really found my niche. I care deeply about community. And then the evening... Um, uh, show that we do is called LA Stories, where I get to do these amazing in-depth profiles, where you really get a chance to get to know how someone ticks and what yes. their mind works. These are ordinary people who are doing extraordinary things. They don't always have to be superstars. We have so many extraordinary souls around us making a difference in our communities, in our own backyard. And I found that when we focus on those stories, they inspire people, Kim. And it's this is the, my life's work, and I love doing it. <laughs> oh, man, I love looking at that. It's online. Just go to um, LA Stories, Spectrum One News. I mean, you do everybody from Elon Musk mother to Frank Gehry, the, <laughs> Frank Gehry, the architect. Who else? You did the earthquake lady, a seahorse expert. I did well, Dr. Lucy Jones. She is amazing. She cares deeply, obviously, about, you know, she's the maven of earthquakes. She's what, the person we all turn to in the earth shakes here in California. Uh, but she also cares deeply about climate change, and she um, knows how to communicate it in such a way where it's not terrifying, but it makes you feel in command and control 
of the uncontrollable. And that's a gift. And then the earth, the uh, seahorse whisper, this amazing man who is a, a special needs teacher who found a colony of the most rare and exquisite seahorses beneath the sea. And he created colonies for them to help preserve them and save them and study them. So he was magical. But May Musk, you would love her. Everybody watching, you should buy her book, A Woman Makes a Plan. And the reason why is she's in her 70s. She's a supermodel. And she has just like a, us. <laughs> take charge. Yeah, just like us. She has a but she listen, she's like Elizabeth Kubler Ross when you ask about, you know, wrinkles and plastic. She goes, if it weren't for the wind storm to the canyons, you'd never know the beauty of their carvings. Now, Kim, you and I can like give up our Botox uh, injections to be that spiritual at some point. Hey, hey, no, we can't. <laughs> this is the first thing. I thought I had COVID. I just need Botox. This is all it is. It's so disgusting. Okay. The other thing is, um, I could go on about your stories. The limbless guy that I don't know, he had no arms and legs and he was so self-confident and amazing. Nick Wojcic. Oh, is that, how did you find him? A dear friend of mine um, was representing him at one time. You know, he's a global speaker. He has a worldwide ministry, Christian ministry. He was born without arms or legs and he has a life without limbs ministry. And he has the most beautiful outlook. In fact, his, one of his companies is called Attitude is Altitude. And what he shares, he uses humor. He always says, you know, I don't want to disarm you. The man has no arms. Or he goes, I, you know, I, during the COVID-19, I just spoke with him and he was saying, you know, I have to wash my hands constantly. You know, these are the, the oh inner workings of his mind. And he has four beautiful children and he, ha he preaches to, you know, more than a billion people around the world. Um, he's extraordinary. And he says, listen, I prayed and prayed for a miracle. I um, wanted to commit suicide when I was a kid. I couldn't play games. I couldn't do the things other kids were doing. But then he said, I realized that just because you're not given a miracle doesn't mean you can't be one for somebody else. Oh, wow. And now he goes and speaks worldwide to children and young people in school and corporate offices where he says, whatever God has given you, whatever is your fate in the hand that you're dealt, you are here for a reason and you matter and we see you. And I found him extraordinary. And you know, we put someone like that who lives in California on our air. And Natalie. the social media just lit up with this man. He was so, people need to hear you matter even if you don't fit the criteria of what is supposed to be, what it's supposed that, to look like. You that, fit, was you matter. So irres that was so irresistible. I mean, I don't even know. No, listen, I've been texting your daughter while we, right before we went on, your beautiful Talay. Tell her to get off the internet because you're going fuzzy. So you need to keep, <laughs> I mean, fuzzy is good sometimes, right? But, <laughs> honey, we have so much to talk about. And I'm going to try to keep it to 30 minutes because we have so much to say. But I know you guys pivoted. But when did Spectrum and you first realize that COVID was the real deal, that something was going to change? We started first hearing reports um, around in December. And, you know, you didn't, I didn't take much notice of it. I heard, you know, Wuhan was the epicenter. It came out of the wet markets, the animal markets, which, you know, I find detestable anyway, from bat to human transition, transmission. We were reading about it in the headlines almost daily. The numbers kept climbing. But what really um, grabbed me were two specific uh, moments in the news cycle. And one was a Chinese doctor who went to Facebook and in secret, um, was trying to warn the planet of this pandemic and that it was right. very grave and lethal and that there was uh, information being concealed. That's the first time I took notice of it being larger than just um, a virus, you know, in another part of the world. Um, but then when he died, I took notice of this man who, um, this doctor who was impacted himself. But then it started to get, you know, we, we started having cases in Italy and Spain, and it was almost like a flea. We only found one flea, and I started to realize this is a bigger news story, and it's about to hit. No one could have predicted this. This is like a movie from outbreak or pandemic. Yeah. This is not something you think would happen in America. This is, these are things that happen in third world countries, That's right. especially with the lack of PPE and all the protective gear. But um, when the NBA... And March 11th, I will not forget the day when they canceled the league and the games, I realized then they took action before others took action. And that's when I realized we're in trouble and they don't know what this is. For the first yeah. time in my adult life as a journalist, but also just as a woman, Human. I, was, I was quite taken with, you know, the onslaught of something we were not prepared for. Well, I, I swear to you, everybody has had to pivot. And I am so tickled to see, I see your Instagram posts 
where you do just the facts. What is that now? What is that program? It's the special we've done, um, COVID-19, just the facts, where we really kind of dig into the response. And for me, more personally, I'm interested, you know, you'll find those reports everywhere, the numbers, the uh, death count, the, you know, the spread, uh, the search for a vaccine, you know, the politicization of this pandemic, which is just so frightening in and of itself. Um, but I focus on um, thought leaders, spiritual leaders, um, oh. those on the front line to find, you know, wisdom of how we should um, have a mindset and a heart set um, to tackle the unknown. You know, funny enough, Kim, I was reading this book by Pema Chandran called Welcoming the Unwelcome. I just happened to be reading it um, when the Kobe Bryant crash happened and then at the, you know, just the onset of the pandemic. And it really gave me a template to, you know, to embrace that which is so uncomfortable, not easy, um, but to, I was already in a mindset of this is so uncharted territory, so uncomfortable, yes. but you welcome it as what are the lessons, what's the silver linings? And I looked for people to interview in my work that could bring us another perspective other than fear. And as we know from our work with the Global Wellness Summit, um, what's the best anecdote to fear? Love, unity. And you know? And positivity. Yeah. So I interviewed um, the police chief on his frontline actions, the sheriff, uh, the head of the California Foundation uh, endowment, rather, um, who you know gives billions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars to nonprofits, because we know when you know the underserved, who are already you know suffering, suffering. And actually, well, when a pandemic or a crisis or a natural disaster, it's who gets hit hardest they do. So I went to find out what's being done on the front lines to shore up these inequities and how are you getting to I interviewed a rabbi, Rabbi Steve Leader. Oh my gosh, so what he said about the light comes through the darkest part of your eyes. What a guy. What a guy. And it didn't matter. He wasn't speaking to a just Jewish, you know, congregation. No. He was no. speaking to humanity. He said things like, this is what I love about my work and it he said things like Look, it, it may not be worth it to have gone through this pandemic, but the slowdown of life, the return to home, that we you know, spend time off the treadmill, the rat race, uh, that we get a chance to be at home with ourselves. He, he said, it may not be worth it, but it's not worthless. And I took that to heart, and I think our viewers did. Because the bottom, yes, the death count is high. There's such deep fear and the whole yeah. economy shut down. But there have been some silver linings. I spend more time with my daughter, my dogs. I'm off that rat race and you know it's hard. It's um, very hard. You can read a book. You can, you can take time to bake again, to be in your garden and to be at home with yourself. It's a reset. And I think we needed a reset, girl. Boy, did we ever. Like, <laughs> yeah. Things were a click away. I saw your hike with your dog. You know, I'm a big hiker. The, most of the trails are closed. I just yelled at my girl because she was chewing on something that she shouldn't. But nonetheless, they keep us sane. But they can't wait till we get back to work more. Like Our dogs have had enough. But the other thing is, um, I was trying to read your daughter Talay's about mitzvah speech. You adopted her, I believe, from Guatemala. She's so serene, that girl. She reminds me of one of those wise women of old, the you know, native oh, indigenous oh. people. And she used the word courage in her speech. And she talked about when she was a baby, she remembered hiding behind your legs and growling at people because she, didn't, she didn't, was afraid of uh, strangers. But she learned to take on the word courage. I think we can learn from Tile, don't you? <laughs> You know what? Uh, there's so much I learned from that beautiful Mayan princess. She's got an indigenous wisdom that is just coursing through her veins. Yeah. And, you know, she's not a uh, people pleaser and she's not a uh, performer. She'll always say, you know, mom, you smile sometimes when you're not feeling the smile. I'm like, ooh, she's like, really? <laughs> she's really like cuts a little close to the heart. Oh, my God. But she reminds me that, um, you know, there's just simplicity in um, in your own knowing. She doesn't have to perform, be right. She doesn't have that kind of an ego. She's just, she's just loves being in the moment. I learn a lot from her, you're so right. And she has immense courage to be who she is. And yeah. I can only wish that for myself and for everyone that we, yeah. um, we own who we are and feel that comfortability, you know, to be- Well, I said, I said, you know, you taught me and you get, get me all choked up because these things end up getting pretty emotional, these little conversations we have. But, you know, you taught me to really love the story, to believe in the story. You're a great storyteller. I try to be. And you also taught me to believe my own story. Yeah. So I think 
that's what you do for people and that's wonderful you make them feel special when you talk to them honey so tell me something that you or spectrum one have done we know we've we've talked about some things but tell us what's um caruso rick caruso told you about small business oh well you know rick caruso is a titan of um of development here in California. He's a um, multi-billionaire. He owns some of the biggest outdoor shopping centers in yep. the Southland that are community gathering centers. And um, he has a love of family and deep faith and um, kind of runs his properties like a, a Disneyland. But he has many, many tenants and yep. he is taking care of those tenants. And he says, big, small business will come back. He said that we all have an obligation to help one another um, to take care of our employees at, at, however possible. Um, but he had um, a tremendous amount of um, spirit to share with uh, certainly uh, the United States and around the world saying, we will come back because that's what entrepreneurial spirit does. And I have to tell you, you asked me about Spectrum. You know, obviously Rick Caruso was one of our great interviews. And, um, but we have seen people as we have across the nation and across the world who are suffering equally, you know, um, we've seen that they've had to make a pivot. When you must, you do, you can. And people are out of work right now and people have the fear of losing and it's a real threat of their business. We have 20 to 30% unemployment. Um, people may not be able to recover, but here's what I have seen. I have seen restaurants convert and pivot to takeout. I've yep. seen them convert their um, restaurants into markets and sell toilet paper because people need it. Yeah. And they are doing what they can. And it reminds me of when I was in war zones, Kim, um, what I loved about my work covering, um, you know, hot spots around the world when I was a correspondent, the resilience of the human spirit always moved me deeply. I remember being in Israel and I would walk by uh, these showers on the corners when Saddam Hussein was lobbying Scud missile attacks into Tel Aviv. And there were these older uh, couples walking by and there'd be showers like right in front of the corners on where the hospital was. And I said, what do you see when you see these showers? And they said, they were here during Hitler's time. You know, I lost a hundred members of my family to the Holocaust. I remember this woman as if it were yesterday. And she said, my daughter, we're going to visit her now. A scud hit her apartment in Tel Aviv. And the father patted her shoulder with warmth. They'd been married a hundred years, it seems. And he said, omits. You know what omits is? And I said, I don't. Just it's the word for courage. We brought it up. And he goes, we must have courage for what we believe. And we'll get through this. We've gotten through before and we'll do again. We'll rebuild. And they were deeply moved by that. As I'm deeply moved by the people here finding a way to make this work. You know, you said this with your partner on the air. You're like, out of the darkest times in history have come some of the greatest works of art. What yeah. was that that you and your on-air partner talked about? Oh, he was rattling off a litany of Shakespeare and all these great authors who wrote, like, you know, Love in the Time of Cholera, you know. Yeah. Wrote, you know, um, and when you have the time and you're not uh, distracted or deluded by all the accoutrement, the job, the meeting, the lunch appointment, the fast, you know, filled up calendar. Um, you have to go to the workout at this. When you all of a sudden just have time to breathe and reconnect with what truly is in your heart and not driving towards some outside measure of anything, um, you have time to create and you have time to read and to think and to allow seeds to take a hold and grow and ferment and somehow, you know, bring you new insight, new wisdom and a new sense of self. And I know I've talked to, you know, many people that I am um, working still with and friends and family. It's given them time to rethink what's important in yeah. life. Yeah. You know? One no. of the people that I interviewed, I'll just tell you, because I know you admire him is Dr. Dr. Father Fred Boyle of Homeboy Aww. Industries. Jesuit. I mean, just such a magnificent. Just tell, him what, tell everyone what he does. He makes sure that immigrant children who somehow got here by themselves are not alone, that they have education, they have food, they have safety, right? Well, okay, so we're talking, so yeah, I love you because you know my history. So we work with the um, San Fernando Valley Children's Refugee Center and Father Fred Morris, brilliant man. He helps unaccompanied minors. There are more than 6,000 in Los Angeles, many more thousands across the 
the world. Some of them are still in detention centers, separated from their families, and they're here to apply for asylum, which is their constitutional right. And even though all of these things are being contested legally and constitutionally, he advocates on behalf of minor kids whose feet can't even hit the floor in court when they're there by themselves at two, three, four years old. Um, and so we, my daughter from Guatemala obviously resonates deeply with these children. She could have been one of them. We see That's ourselves right. in each other. And uh, he works to raise money to um, you know, find them legal representation so they have a shot at asylum to be free, to play, to learn, to live violence free. Um, Father Greg Boyle is uh, the man who founded um, Homeboy Industries, which is a gang prevention and uh, rehabilitation center. It's a model for the planet on how to um, see ourselves, even in those we think are so different. Mm -hmm. um, and he gives them jobs and they have a bakery and a homegirl bakery. I mean, what he does is magnificent. And in LA, I, yeah. And he, we did an interview. It was my first like real like Zoom interview, which was so different. But... Um, he said something that really um, has always deeply touched my heart. He said that, you know, we belong to each other. And one of the great things about this pandemic is that it had no boundaries or borders or walls. It doesn't just attack one party or another, the rich, the poor, the... The great equalizer. Right? It's the great equalizer. And what you realize is, I mean, my God, all over the world, every human being is contending with this pandemic and we're in this together. And even though that's deeply frightening and disturbing, oh my gosh, there's something so beautiful and a hopefully... I pray, I hold this in the highest of intentions that we remember our, you know, that we are in this together, that yeah. what happens to the One. least of us happens to all of us. It's, you know, and in being served and in service, you know, if we go out without a mask, you're not just hurting yourself or your family, you're hurting those you may not ever know. So I think there's, I mean, maybe the universe said, look, you're screwing up the planet with this climate change. You know, you're not listening to <laughs> fighting and bickering politically. I need to step in with a plague or something to remind you what's important. And, uh, well, you know, you do, there's a ripple effect. Actions have consequences, right? But when you think about how puny humans are, we think we're so smart. A, snow, a bunch of snowflakes can freeze New York City. One little virus has stopped the world, right? That's worth a poem. And speaking of poems, you know, Giselle, we were talking about when you were host of Mexico City Summit, that we woke up to the news that the Paris terrorist attacks happened. And I reminded Susie Ellis, the founder of the summit about it. And she goes, I'll never forget the, po the poem that Giselle wrote and read to us. You know, there wasn't a dry in the place. She said, I think we need a poem from Giselle about now. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I've written some um, and I'll share them with you. I'll send them to you. I, you know, that's one of the great things of slowing down. You know, I realize how, you know, uh, on the treadmill I have been and with the hours they're you know so crazy and I love my work but um just having some extra time has been so um it's allowed for a reset and it's allowed me to sit down and write poetry and poetry is such a great way for me to be able to express myself it's not factual it doesn't follow a linear you know constructed thought it allows me to, to dig deep and touch you know the center of my marrow so that I can share it and uh so We've I'll send you one of mine. Yeah. The other thing for everybody who's listening, if you want to laugh, you know, you look at Giselle, she's so beautiful and she's so smart. And you think, well, she's so funny. I mean, one of your, <laughs> one of your Instagram posts was you losing a press on nail, a lead press. Okay, can we talk? I mean, forget all the spiritual stuff for a second. All right, like grooming for women. Okay, like one of the things like, okay, I feel like if I were, you know, Kathy, this would be like Lent. Okay, I can't do my nails. I can't get my toes manicured. I, there's no waxing. There's no <laughs> eyebrow plucking. There's no hair dye. So I've done it myself. So the hair dye is all over my bathroom and permanently stained on my cabinets. It's a disaster. And it's the wrong color. And then I use press on nails and the funniest thing happened, I, but I've gotten creative. So I'm usually so classic. I've gotten really super creative. I wear bling, I wear little diamonds on. The plus. <laughs> so I'm in the, at the women's jail in Linwood. It's the largest jail in the country. And I'm there to do, you know, interview with, you know, how they're managing coronavirus there. Oh, and boy. keeping the spread down. And right in the beginning of the interview and the tour, a nail pops off. I'm like, oh my God. This is a disaster. And I'm mortified. The nail goes clink and it clinks to the floor. I'm like, oh my God. And the guard, the female deputy, she is so cool. She goes, We've lost your volume, cutie pie. I don't know what your volume. There, are you back? 
Yeah, you are back? You, are you here? The, fem the female guard picked up your nail and put it on or what? She picked up the nail. She was not a problem. She was, these iridescent greens, they're also press-ons because who can get a manicure? So she went and got the, the glue, plopped it on, pressed it on. I was done. I love press-on nails. Let me tell you I, something right now. <laughs> I, I think I may have to get some. But these are the things that we learn about each other through this time and what really matters. My husband colored my hair in the kitchen window because the light was it. good. And all the neighbors were walking by. And they're like, what's happening? Can I get on the appointment <laughs> boat? Yank lash. You know, it's so funny. Speaking of husband, full disclosure, Giselle was a bridesmaid for me in 1997. We had a beautiful reception in her backyard with a live Cuban band. We, we ruined your kitchen, I do believe, but anyway, it that was worth it. And we go back and I watched you with your, your beautiful boy and him graduating and we've lived life yeah. together, woman. We do. And it's just so thrilling to know that we can help communicate what's made us strong. We all get our weekdays, don't we, Giselle? We all get fearful, but we have to be positive because there's no other option. And I just encourage everybody to click on um, Giselle's LA stories, try to find her COVID updates because they won't make you cry. They'll make you have hope. And my sweetie pie, you tell us one more thing. You do your, your hikes, you do your baby girl, you do poetry. What else do you do for joy? We'll leave with people. Well, you know what? And I know that you know this about me, but I am a huge lover of animals and I, I just find uh, and revere life and yeah in reverence and I love my dogs and I love running with them and hiking with them. And I wish every dog could be out of a cage and find a loving home and every animal would be out of cages and allowed to live free without abuse. So um, yeah. those are my joys, my animals, my daughter, my garden, my hikes, you know, the sunshine. And I feel really uh, an immense gratitude uh, to be healthy and to be doing what I love to do. What more could you ever ask for? Right, Kimmy? That's right. And this is wellness. This is wellness. So my sweetie pie, you have had so many people waving. Sammy Garini. Uh, there's so many people here that you know. Belgian Axoy, the Global Wellness Day inventor. Tell Sammy so I we're say hi. I love him. I will, yeah. And uh, we're just going to send big hugs to everybody. Giselle, you're an angel for doing this with us. And it'll be online so people can watch it. But keep telling good stories. We need them. And I love you. I love you too. Thanks for having me on, Kim. You're the best interviewer. You're uh, putting us all to shame. Oh, <laughs> Thank wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, honey, fine. See you. Bye. Bye.